Beautiful. Hello, wonderful people of the internet. Thank you so much for coming back to my channel. If you're new here, hi. My name is Daria, I am a cellist, and I talk about things that I find interesting or fascinating in classical music. But there are also times where I just sit down at my desk, I grab a cup of tea, and then I just kind of tell you about things off the cuff. This time, as per request on my Patreon page, I'm going to tell you as much as I can about what it was like for me to be a student at a music college. To start off, I'm going to talk just a little bit about the general kind of technicalities of being a music student. So if you are, so if you are a music student or you know about all of this, uh, I think I'm gonna put in the timestamp here-ish uh, so you can skip all of that if it's not interesting to you. So skip to this place now. Now for everybody who's still here, let's see. Studying music is different from studying other subjects at university or at college. As in, And also disclaimer, I am talking about this from the standpoint of someone who was brought up in Central Europe. So that means it's just a very different kind of culture around studying classical music, as you will very quickly see, because, spoiler alert, I went to a German music college and to a British one. So, and I, I was very surprised by the pretty big differences. So yeah, my perspective is that of somebody who first and foremost went into the music education system um, in Austria and then in Germany. So the system as I know it roughly works like this. As a student, y you don't choose your university based on the name of the university or college or the location of it, but you choose it for which teacher you want to go to in terms of your main subject. Now your main subject is the instrument that you play. So I as a cellist, when I got to the end of my time at high school, I started looking for different tutors to see who would kind of fit me best. And this is a very, very individual kind of thing. I think that's the first main different thing because that means you will very likely not end up at a college that's close to where you live. It can still happen, especially if you live in Vienna, for example, or Berlin or Paris, you've got really fantastic teachers right there at your doorstep. But for me, someone who grew up in the middle of nowhere, and uh, as I said in a previous video, in order to get really good cello lessons with a teacher who really fit me from the ages of 12 till 18, I, um, my parents drove me to a city that was quite far away from where we lived once a week. So depending on how serious you are about this and on how, um, how much you can afford, I guess, you are gonna go to some lengths to find um, the best teacher for you in the current situation. And that is how I ended up moving from middle of nowhere Austria to... I'm not gonna tell you where. <laughs> uh, and you will see why. But yeah, I, I ended up in Germany. Now once you are at college, there are a few main fields that you're gonna focus on in the college. One is obviously, again, your main instrument, your main subject. Then there is the theory complex. So these are some of the theory subjects you may study at music college. And the third thing is further performance. So that would be the college orchestra if you're studying sort of the classical 
branch. If you're a jazz musician, then you're gonna do b jazz band. But yeah, for me as a classical musician, I had orchestra every term, several orchestra uh, projects. I also did chamber music, which is playing together with just a few other people. So that could be playing together with just one other person as a duo or three people total as a trio, four people total as a quartet, etc, etc. That's the gist of it. Exams? You do have theory exams for most of these theory modules, but the big thing that's going to decide, that, well not decide your grade, but that's gonna have the most influence on your grade is a final recital, um, both for your bachelor's and your master's degree. And that is going to be um, a little concert of varying length and you are expected to choose repertoire that is both up to general standards and up to your own standards and you're going to perform it in front of a panel at my German college it was my my main tutor plus a few others at my UK college it was just three random tutors and one of them was not from the college so Again, huge difference. I was like, when I uh, switched between the two colleges, that was quite a culture shock for me. <laughs> All of that means that the things I do outside of college and the things I do to prepare for all of my duties at college would mainly be practicing my instruments so that I was prepared for my uh, main subject lessons and for, you know, orchestra rehearsals, chamber music rehearsals, that sort of stuff. And the other bit would be whatever we had to do for theory um, modules. Okay, I think that covers everything in terms of general functionality of a music college. If you have any more questions, please don't hesitate to leave them in the comments and I will respond to everything. I will answer all questions that I can possibly answer. So yeah, don't be shy. I'm, I'm very friendly, I think, I hope. Okay, and now our friends who skipped ahead are going to join us again. So here we go. One more disclaimer before I properly get into this. I don't want to tell you where in Germany I went to college because I went to a very small college. The thing is, I want to be honest about my experiences and my thoughts after the fact. And it's not all going to be positive, I, I, I have to say. So yeah, uh, that is why I'm not going to disclose where in Germany I went to college. Just know it was tiny. That's all you need to know. <laughs> As for my British college, I can already tell you I went to RNCM in Manchester. Okay, let's get into it. Okay, let's start with my German college. So I enrolled in 2009 and did a four year bachelor degree. I did my final recital in July of 2013. Then autumn 2013, I started a master's degree, which I did not finish. And I will get to that. But uh, what you need to know right now is that I was um, enrolled in that master's degree for three years. So until uh, July, 2016. At that point I left and moved to England. And in autumn, 2016, I started my master's degree at RNCM. But let's, let's stay in Germany, as I said, I came to Germany from the middle of nowhere in Austria, so I had never been in an environment that was completely made for aspiring profess professional musicians. And before I went there, I was so looking forward to it because I didn't know what it was like to have friends who I could meet and talk to regularly and who would understand a large part of my life. So that was hugely exciting for me. When I did get there and when I started, 
it really was like a dream come true. I think in that regard, it really helped that my college was very small because it was very easy to get to know people. It wasn't totally overwhelming. I quickly made friends with other people in my year. Also the, the, the town, city, also very small, which, you know, coming from a village with about uh, 1800 souls, uh, it was good that I didn't immediately go to Berlin or Stuttgart or something. <laughs> I think I would have been far too overwhelmed. Um, so yeah, small city, small college, very friendly. For the first time, it was all about music and all about practicing. Not to say that I didn't struggle at first, because I did, because I moved uh, very far away from home. And as people who have known me for my entire life will tell you, when I was little, I was such a homebody in the sense that if I went to a sleepover, my parents would have to go and pick me up at 11 p.m. because I just couldn't face the thought of not sleeping at home for a night. Um, yeah, and my tutor there, I absolutely loved my tutor. I chose that college because he was there. I was immediately comfortable there and gosh, just the thought of like knowing there would be people I could make music with and playing in an orchestra of people who were at a similar skill level as me. It was great. Even though it was tough getting used to living on my own and sort of suddenly having all these adult responsibilities, uh, I grew a lot from that. I learned a lot. My tutor also had a lot of patience with me kind of having to settle in. At first I couldn't really focus on practicing because I was kind of too distraught. <laughs> from being in a in a very foreign sort of environment for me. I mean, luckily, I didn't move to a country with a completely different language. It was still the same language, so there was no, you know, no culture shock in that sense. By the time I left that college, I was so ready to leave. So, so, so ready to leave. And that is because for all of its coziness and familiarity, there were a lot of problems. <laughs> Again, I want to say I really loved my cello tutor. He really made me into the musician that I am today. Without that foundation, I wouldn't be where I am now. So I don't regret being there. I do wish I had more time at RNCM. That is something I do wish, but can't do it over now. I guess let's go into some of those things that weren't so great. And most of these I kind of started to realise in hindsight as I was preparing to, to leave, to, to go to England. I started to really, really see. But even even before that, it got it got quite obvious. I need some tea before I dive into that. The fact that the college was so tiny is what caused most of the problems. But also the fact that it was German. Honestly, I don't know how to convey just how conservative and behind the times music education is, especially in the German-speaking countries. I can't speak for Switzerland. And I do have to remind you, I can only speak for Austria and Germany for the time that I experienced it. I left Austria in 2009. I left Germany in 2016. Stuff may well have changed. And I really hope it's changed at this point. But yeah, these are my experiences from the time. Nelson, what are you doing? So with that said, the theory modules were <laughs> fantastically outdated. Partly because of the tutors who were teaching those modules. They were all of the older ge generation, extremely German. Things like learning about different 
musical tra- traditions, forget it. Learning about harmonics and musicianship in a way that's actually useful to a modern practicing musician, forget it. Completely forget it. And I guess we're already there. Racism. This is one of the reasons why I've been struggling with starting to film this video at all. Because it's just really, really uncomfortable to talk about, but I also finally want to talk about it. So, here we go, I guess. Musicians will know that in Western institutions, we get quite a large number of East Asian students. So from South Korea, China, Japan less so, like what I've experienced, Japan less so. Most East Asian students that I met were either from South Korea or China. And, you know, German is not an easy language to learn. So when they started at college, they usually had a, you know, a very limited grasp on the language. No effort was made to do anything about that. They did have to, from from what I know, they did have to take a German exam before they started, but that exam was not linked to the college itself. That was kind of an outside thing. I think they had to take it at the actual university. The college itself did not even a bare minimum of trying to help these students um, learn the language and get used to this vastly different culture from what they were used to. There were no, say, Korean tutors or Chinese tutors or even assistants, I guess. There could have been assistants who who just could have helped them, could have given them some kind of induction to prepare them for certain things, but none of that was done. So the Asian students were just kind of left to their own devices and then the German tutors got extremely frustrated with them for not understanding any of the language. When the tutors made no attempt to make it easier for these students to understand, they were allowed to have a dictionary with them for exams. However, one of the tutors, because he was getting sick and tired of people cheating by, you know, bringing sort of cheat sheets in with their dictionaries, actually banned dictionaries from his exams near the end of my time there. Which, you know, isn't great. I have to add that these tutors themselves had uh, often had very limited grasps on languages other than German. If you get mad at other people for not speaking your own language well, if, if you yourself can't speak another language properly, just just don't. Live and let live, you know? Yeah, so that was a general problem. Plus the usual thing that happens, I'm sure, everywhere uh, in the Western world with people not being able to properly pronounce students' names and not remembering them because they sound so different from the names that they're used to. So it was just, in general, a very awkward situation. I mean, I have to admit, I tended to stay away from those students who I couldn't really communicate with. And I'm really not proud of that, and I'm still grappling with that, but mm, that's the situation. If I could do it over, I would definitely do it differently. I would make so much more of an effort to try and connect to my fellow students who, you know, they inevitably started to, to just stick to their own groups. And who could blame them? I would do the same. Absolutely. If I was in that position, I would, and, and there was no help offered to me, I would absolutely do the same. To just kind of round that topic off. The fact that nothing was done to change any of this, there was no attempt made to make things easier for these foreign students, 
to offer them um, not even somebody in the faculty that they could talk to. As I said, there were no, as in, in my time, I don't think there were any tutors even from outside of Europe, now that I'm thinking about it. No, I don't think so. So yeah, that's just, that was the situation. And um, I look back at that and I absolutely hate it. And that's not even to talk about the, the just incredible racism among classical musicians towards um, East Asian musicians, like the prevailing stereotype is that they play like machines. Like they've been, they've been the most recent story I can think of is of this uh, violinist, Pinkas Sukerman, basically claiming that East Asian cultures can't sing. So again, this, this uh, stereotype, they play like machines, they have the technique, but they don't have the musical heart, which just completely strips them of their personhood. And oh, I can't believe I bought into this for so long. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm kind of working through this as I talk about it, but it's just so infuriating to me that I'm only just... <sighs> I'm, I'm, I'm only just really starting to understand how harmful that was and how I was also perpetuating it. That is a huge reason why when I look back at my time at that college, it's just tainted by these things. And um, I don't know if any of that has been improved lately. I would hope so, but somehow I have a feeling that, you know, it's not a priority. So in comparison to that, the other issues seem kind of less uh, pressing, but they were still issues. So for example, we had a module that was meant to prepare us. It was a kind of freelance musician type of module. The tutor kind of talked about uh, what what we had to do to put on a recital or something. The only issue is that tutor, uh, a couple of years later, was charged with six-figure fraud. And connecting that to the next issue, which is, I think, quite a big issue again at German colleges, they did nothing to foster realistic job expectations. The way I went into college was with this attitude you just practice and everything else will work out fine. And a lot of classical musicians, I think, go into studying with this attitude of when I'm out of college, I'm going to be a famous soloist. <laughs> so everybody comes in with a massive, massive ego uh, and with the expectation that they're going to win some kind of big competition, uh, get some kind of massive scholarship and uh, then they are going to be famous and they're not going to need any of the not any of the other knowledge that we kind of learn about at college which was a problem when it came to things like orchestra for example because the prevailing attitude among a lot of people was well I should say among a lot of string players I think that is a specific string player problem was, oh, I'm gonna be the next Yasha Heifetz, the next Jacqueline Dupre. I don't need orchestra. Why should I make an effort for orchestra? And also, orchestra is so easy. You don't have to practice for playing symphonies and stuff like that. I should focus on all of my solo repertoire. I should focus on practicing concertos, not a stupid symphony. <sighs> Dear viewer, that's not how any of that works. So that made some orchestra rehearsals very frustrating. And they say that this is a string player problem because wind players and percussionists go into the musician job market 
with different prospects because when you are a wind player in an orchestra, you're basically a soloist. There's no doubling up parts, basically. Everybody, the part they have is their unique part. So as a wind player in an orchestra, you have to be insanely good. And that is also reflected... Oh my God, Nelson. That is also reflected in their salary. <laughs> Whereas as a string player, if you're a violinist, if you're in the first violins, there's approximately 14 other people playing the exact same thing as you. And that can foster an attitude of, it's fine if I'm not prepared well, because everybody else is also playing the same thing. It's like, sometimes we kind of refer to ourselves as cannon fodder. <laughs> Which, um, and that's also, I think, where that attitude of, of being a string player in an orchestra is easy. It's not easy. Maybe I should make a video about this. Because I was one of those who went into college thinking I was going to be a super famous soloist. And I have since gained huge respect for orchestra mu musicians. So uh, maybe that would be an interesting video topic. Let me know. I feel like this is a very disjointed video. I hope that's not... I hope, I hope you're fine with that. Uh, but, you know, it's a tea time video. It's bound to be a bit. The last thing that I wanted to kind of touch upon is the other problem with this college being tiny in a very small city is the typical big fish in a small pond dilemma. There were a lot of people at this college, both students and tutors, who they kind of had a monopoly on connections and if you were on some specific tutor's good sides that was good for you if they didn't like you or you kind of fell out with them too bad you're not gonna get any performance opportunities and if there's say only one tutor for one specific subject that's a problem I'm not somebody who can easily fit in with these things. And I'm not saying that to make myself out as a kind of glorious lone wolf. I'm just really bad at networking. I'm awkward. I can't really, like, get in somebody's good books just for the sake of it. Or just for the sake of getting certain opportunities. It's just not... I'm just not wired in that way. So I, when I left Germany after seven years, I, I didn't leave behind a network, let's say it that way. I didn't lose much by leaving, <laughs> which, you know, says a lot. That can be a big problem because it's, it's a gamble whether or not you get along with a certain person or not. Or, you know, if something happens that can be the end of a lot of good things for you. And with, with that, we are coming slowly but steadily and very surely to my time at RNCM. Just very quickly, as I said at the beginning, I started a master's degree in Germany, which I didn't finish. If I had finished my master's degree in Germany, I wouldn't have been able to do the master's degree in the UK. It's as simple as that. And because in Germany, um, tuition is free. That means I didn't lose any money by not finishing this degree. There were no consequ consequences for me, nothing. So I just left. And why did it still take me three years in that degree? Well, I took two terms of leave. One because I was doing an internship with an orchestra and the other because I was doing an associate studentship at RNCM. And I want to quickly tell you about this because it's pretty interesting. So not many people at RNCM itself actually know this, but there is this thing called an associate studentship. You can do this for one to three terms. I think it's roughly £3,000 per term. So that's as much as you would pay for a regular year of a master's degree, quite possibly. I don't know. Things have also changed um, since then. I did this associate studentship uh, from September 2015 to March 2016. So I did it for two terms and I paid about 6,000, a bit more than 6,000 pounds for that. 
and basically during that time you are outside of any of the courses but you are treated as a full-time student and you get to do any module that you want you get to try out what seriously whatever whatever you want and i also had the option of finishing modules and you know doing the the exams for them and then having those credits count towards whatever proper degree i chose to pursue um if if i wanted to so that is actually really just a, a fantastic opportunity the only thing is that it costs quite a lot my original plan was to do an erasmus year there but that didn't work out but luckily my tutor at rncm knew about the associate studentship and turned me on that and because of that i was able to still um go there because i wanted to try it out because that was a huge move for me going from germany where i was still fairly well i wasn't close to my family but you know it was still closer than going all the way to england and if I went to England, I really would be on my own and have to rebuild my social networks, kind of. I wanted to make sure that it was the right thing for me. And that was a good decision because being there for half a year made things a lot easier for me. I did finish a module during that time and got the credits for that. That counted towards my actual degree. And while I was there, I applied for the entrance exams for the next year. So that was right in the middle of my time there, which means it was so much easier for me to prepare, to get there on the day. It just made things so much easier and people already knew me. I can definitely recommend to anybody who's thinking about going to any college, get to know the people in whatever way you can. It, it really makes things so, so much easier. So that was kind of my transition from Germany to the UK. Now, UK time. I did a one year intensive master degree at RNCM. There is a degree where you can cram the two, the regular two years that a master's normally takes. You can cram it all into one year. You still have to gain the same amount of credits to do the same, you have to do the same amount of modules, but you can finish it at the end of a year. The main reason why I did this is that it was cheaper. And as you know, I had already spent, you know, seven years in education and I wanted to get to the end of it at some point. I lived in halls during that time, right ne next door to, to the college. So that also cost money. And then after I graduated in 2017, I actually went, went back a year later to do the String Leadership Scheme, which is a joint course between the RNCM and the Halle Orchestra. And you can think of it as a very lucrative internship. <laughs> there are a few college activities. You have to play with the college orchestra for one project and there are a couple of other things that are associated with, associated with the college but basically 90% of it is playing with the orchestra and 10% of it is being at college so yeah it was a college course but um, it wasn't very college intensive so I'm going to focus on my master's degree. Now the first thing that <laughs> I noticed obviously that RNCM is mahoosive absolutely massive. I mean, people from the UK are going to be used to it because most music colleges here are really big. But for me, it was just like... And it took me ages to not get lost in the building. I was just completely starstruck whenever I went in because there was an actual lobby and a music hall and a theatre and a smaller music hall. And one part of the building just for teaching and then another part with even more teaching spaces. And wow, <laughs> there was just a lot going on. So I was actually quite overwhelmed for the first few months, even having been there for half a year before I started my master's degree. It was quite a lot. And that's one of the main reasons why I kind of wish I had 
had more time there. I don't regret doing a one-year master's, but I still wish I had spent more time in RNCM because there was just so much in terms of what was going on there. So many different performance opportunities and loads of modules. And the way it's structured was a lot uh, more open and freer than what I was used to in Germany. So there were so many modules that were just completely new to me and I wanted to try so many things, but I just didn't have the time, sadly. The choice of modules is really emblematic of the much more open attitude towards everything in music in the UK. The UK has problems with uh, xenophobia, with racism, etc. There's absolutely no question. But before coming to RNCM, I had never seen a black classical musician. You know, it opened my world so much, so, so much. And really set me up so much better for what I wanted to do professionally after being done than anything I ever did in Germany. The modules I chose were just perfect for what I wanted to do. There was a module called Lecture Recital, which is what I do now with my YouTube videos, you know? There was one called Freelance Musician, where the final uh, assessment was to make a video <laughs> about the project that you chose to work on at the beginning of, of the module. Again, YouTube channel, this here, right now, it started. I still have the video on my channel. You can still find it that I did for the Freelance Musician module. I made a little, basically, trailer for the podcast that I had back then. Ooh, that podcast. Yeah, so if you go, you, you can go have a look. You can go and find it. Uh, I'm gonna, like, that's the thumbnail. I hope I still have it on my computer, but yeah, that's it. Go have a look. Go have a look for that. I loved the choice that I had. I loved that I could do things that really interested me and I felt so much better taken care of here in the UK than I ever did in Germany, which is kind of a paradox because at RNCM there were just exponentially more students than back in Germany, but the faculty just seemed to care a lot more about the well-being of each really each individual student. I know now that that is a general general attitude in the UK. But for example, I injured my wrist a couple of times during my time there and college paid for several of my physiotherapy appointments. Just wow. <laughs> and you know, we were encouraged to talk to counsellors about any problems we had with tutors or with uh, things, if, if things went wrong during, um, during a module. Another thing that I found extremely helpful is that at RNCM, students are very much encouraged to think about the music that they play beyond the music that they play. So there is a much bigger focus on research. Master students actually have a module that's called repertoire research, which ties into the final recital. So we had to write a proper essay. No, it was more than an essay. It was like a proper little paper. That's the word. A proper little paper on the pieces that we were, uh, that we would play for our final recital. You know, it could be a sort of theme that tied them together. It could be music from a certain place, music from a certain time period, music that focused on a specific technique. And then we also had to write our own um, program notes. So we had to write like a little, we had to make a little booklet or flyer about the pieces that we were playing um, with just a little bit of information on it. So very much, again, very much encouraged on researching beyond just sort of what the interpretation standards were for that time and things like that, which is something I really, I was interested in before I came to the UK, but was never encouraged to do in Germany. 
which I think is a huge failing on the side of, of, of my German college. There was just one module um, that was called Reflecting on Repertoire. And it was taught by the one tutor who I really respected apart from my main cello tutor and who really encouraged me to think outside of the box and go beyond the, the very rigid tra traditions that were being taught at the German college. So I actually, I owe him a lot. He, yeah, he was the person who was kind of one of the first sparks um, that gave me the idea for, again, for the YouTube channel. So yeah. But at RNCM, that really was expanded properly. And that's how I, that's that's where I took away that I actually could do this. I actually could talk about music in a way that's more holistic than just, oh, you have to phrase this way in a certain way because there's this harmony at the end of it, you know? The whole approach to music education and to being a musician as a profession is so much more expansive and multifaceted here than what I experienced in Germany and I'm so intensely grateful for that and again that is why I kind of wish I had had more time because I think I would have I, I kind of would have liked to try some jazz modules for example um, I because I've, I've met a jazz cellist and he was just the coolest person <laughs> I've ever met and I still dream of being able to do some improvisation one day, maybe. Mm -hmm. And I think those are my main takeaways. Obviously, the fact that RNCM and any college in the UK is just insanely expensive isn't great. Really isn't great. But to a certain extent, and again, that's just me comparing, directly comparing my experiences at a very small German college to my experiences at a very big UK college to an extent you do get what you pay for tuition was free in germany but you could tell that the college was struggling for money quite a lot whereas in at, you know at rncm it's just big it's shiny it's it has everything it literally has everything i hope you students who are still uh, studying at a UK college or who are, you know, who have studied there, I hope you are grateful for what you got because it could have been a lot worse. Let's just do a few quick, very quick comparisons. Firstly, we already said tuition cost. You do, to some extent, get what you paid for. RNCM definitely wins out on that. Diversity. Whew. Whew. Worlds, worlds apart. To be fair, I do not know how East Asian students are treated at RNCM. I don't know if that differs in any way from German institutions. No clue. Still, diversity at RNCM was just so much better, both in terms of tutors and in terms of students, than it was in Germany. Treatment of students. Again, so much better in the UK than it was in Germany, which can be explained with just general attitudes in Germany. In, 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 in Germany and Austria, you're very much left to your own devices and you kind of have to fend for yourself. Uh, in the UK, there was just a lot more emphasis on making sure that students were okay. I felt so much safer there than I did in Germany. Attitude towards job prospects and sort of the, the real world and the job market. There was no question at RNCM that a lot of us would end up as freelancers and doing not just pure playing our instruments. It was clear that some would be, you know, some would be taking freelance gigs as orchestra musicians or in other ensembles and being literate in terms of how do you film your own video? How do you make a professional recording of yourself? None of that at my German college. Musician in some way, uh, instrument tutor or 
music teacher at a school. Those were the three job prospects. I think still at this point, freelance musicians in general in Austria and Germany are really looked down on and there's just no real opportunities for them, even though it's the same as anywhere else. Without these freelance musicians, a lot of the orchestras just wouldn't function. So that's great. Oh, a big one was attitude towards marking and grades. So marking, grading at my college in Germany was very strict, very tough. There's this general attitude of we are the cradle of classical music. We get to be very strict because we have the holy grail of music knowledge. And um, mm -mm. Whereas in the UK, I sometimes honestly felt that grading was just a tiny bit lenient. Like a tiny bit, oh, you did well for participating. So I feel like both could have gone kind of in in the other direction. That said, the feedback I got uh, while I was at RNCM was s just astronomically more useful from, from exams and gradings than the feedback I got in Germany, if I got any feedback at all, to be honest. So again, point to RNCM. Performance opportunities were all right in Germany, but again, as I said, a big fish in a small pond. If you weren't friends with some specific people, you just didn't get any of the really good performance opportunities. Whereas at RNCM, because it's just so big and there are so many events and just different, like there, there's a recital three times a week, basically. So just so much, so many more opportunities and it was more fairly distributed, I think. However, what I liked more about my German college, oh my god, oh my god, Germany gets a point. There were class recitals every term, which means that each instrumental class as a whole each prepared a piece and then got to perform that piece one after the other. Those recitals were free, but we would get quite a lot of people coming in from outside and obviously students from other classes came to uh, support their friends etc. That just wasn't a thing at RNCM, like public class recitals. Which makes sense because there are a lot of classes at RNCM, like there are <laughs> more than a dozen cello tutors. Like, you just there's just no time and space to accommodate every single class, I think, and do like a, a recital like that. So I understand why it didn't happen, but it, it's still still kind of a bummer because it takes away, I think, a thing to work towards each term, just in terms of um, your own kind of preparation and preparing solo repertoire. So yeah, point to Germany. Bing, bing. <laughs> the last thing that I kind of want to compare is the attitude towards broadening students' horizons. And that, again, no question, point goes to the RNCM because of everything that I've laid out, just the, the many, many modules, the many different people who teach those modules. And just the fact that Manchester is this incredibly international city and there are so many different musical influences here. Which isn't to say that in my German town, there would not have been a, an opportunity for that. But it just didn't happen. There were, as I said, a couple of modules that did um, broaden my horizons. And one tutor who um, introduced me to quite a number of opportunities for just doing something that was well outside of my wheelhouse. And I'm so grateful for that. But other than that, it just was very extremely conservative. Which is a shame, because I wish, I do wish I had more, more positive, not more positive, but more positive memories. That's it. I hope that was informative. I hope uh, it was interesting. I hope you got something out of it. 
if you are still watching. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. You have my gratitude. Leave me a music note emoji <laughs> in the comments if you made it this far and um, tell me how you're doing. Now, again, if there's anything you want me to talk more about, please let me know. I like making these tea time videos because they don't require as much like factual preparation. They only require emotional prep. <laughs> so they are a good sort of counter balance to my researched videos. Again, thank you to my patrons for helping me decide on this video topic. If you would like to join them, you can visit my Patreon at patreon.com slash Dorothea. The link is also always in the description. And yeah, until next time, uh, stay safe, stay healthy, wear your masks, get vaccinated if and as soon as you can, and stay tuned. Uh, I mean, in comparison, no clue what he's doing. He's just in his box and just doing this. Nelson, please, I'm trying to film a video. Hmm. This is gonna be a beast to edit. But it's the life I chose, so. Whee! Hi.